checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. And your main event, John Moxley versus Brian Danielson. You have to not say it in such match. a sad way. Yes! Everything about this was sad. It's not a fun match. Actually, it, the first the first five minutes was incredible. Well, so when they fought to the final countdown. That was pretty awesome. That was awesome. But even then, because Moxley comes out, Danielson comes out to final countdown, they start fighting, but the music keeps going. The key is Moxley attacked him right before the chorus hits. So Danielson's up on the top ropes. Everyone's singing along. They're about to sing final countdown. And that's when Moxley hits him. And the crowd's like, boo! We never got to cheer Danielson at the key point of the song. Which, in hindsight, is the story of the entire match. They never got that moment with Brian Danielson the entire night. They played the whole song, but they never got that moment where Danielson was standing tall when the chorus was playing. They never got to sing along as he posed. It never happened. So the bell rings. Because John Moxley's a bastard. He's he spent this entire match taking everything away from you. Yes, one so by one. So you would be angry and pissed off. They weren't. One by one, piece by piece, man. He just took this fucker apart. And they had a great match. It was not Danielson's best. It was not Moxley's best. Because fucking Danielson. It was not Danielson, the best thing on the show. The th here's the thing. Danielson is physically destroyed. Like, he... He's lost feeling in his legs during matches. Like, you can see him doing moves and, like, the the backflip off the top. He barely makes it now. And, you know, he can still do his stuff, but, like, he's not what he used to be. And on top of that, Moxley clearly loves this guy and thinks he's the greatest. And you can just see the way he works. Yeah. He's doing everything in his power to protect this guy. And as a result of that, like... I was there for that John Moxley filthy Tom Lawler match. Yeah, may as well have put that in octagon. I mean, right. they fucking beat the shit out of each other. Yep. And Moxley went for that bulldog choke, and like he wanted that middleweight title. But like here, it's everything is as safe as can be. Like pile driver head nowhere near the cement. Death Rider guy doesn't even <laughs> like Moxley takes the entire bump. So when you have a match like that, it's like one guy's hurt, the other guy's trying not to hurt him. You're not going to have the best Brian Danielson John Moxley match. There, there was a lariat on the floor. Oh, which if mm -hmm. yeah, you, you, you if if uh, uh, if Buddy had been in the ring, Danielson's young son, Moxley would not have not have hit him any harder than this, or would not have hit Danielson any harder than hit Buddy. Either way, it was not a good lariat. Regardless, the story is very good. The pacing is very good. It's all put together well. It is two guys who hate each other fighting to come out on top. But as you watch it. The more you can watch it, you can sense and feel Danielson's body. It's like the end of Endgame. Thanos has snapped his fingers and everyone turns to dust. Yeah. It was kind of a slow process. It took 20, 30 minutes. But you're watching Brian Danielson's body turn to dust in front of you. And Moxie gets that sleeper. And and, and uh, Danielson's very last ditch effort. Is he's, he's actually able to climb the ropes with Moxie on his back, which is incredibly impressive. And drops back and Slams him down, but it doesn't work, and Moxie goes right back to the sleeper. And I watched a lot of Brian Danielson matches. And I don't think I've ever seen him from his feet in a sleeper desperately wave his hand from the top rope like he was waving here. And you're watching, and you can just watch the fire go out in his eyes. His life bar has run out, and not in the video game sense. In the God sense. He's, he's passed on. He's out. And they go down. The ref checks him. The ref calls for the bell and then grabs his head like, oh, my God, that's the end of Brian Danielson. I had friends who actually thought this was a screwed up finish. It was so... Uh, uh, Everybody was stunned. St stunned. They, b b the ref's reaction, when he grabbed his head, they thought that it was a, oh, fuck, I fucked up reaction, not not a, oh, fuck, Danielson's gun reaction. But it was it was so... It was sad. <laughs> It was a sad match. Mm -hmm. That's before we even get to the post match, the whole thing, start to finish, was sad. It was meant to bum you, the fans, out. It worked. It worked. It elicited emotions, which is what art is supposed to do. Well, that's the best thing for business. We can discuss later. But uh, very, they, they, Lord knows, they accomplished what they set out to do. There's no doubt about that. Thing too about this match is, whatever you thought about this match, keep in mind that this match took place in Tacoma. And there's a commission in this state. 
and so they couldn't do blood anywhere on this show. Uh, that's not true. I was told they couldn't do blood. They do blood and defy all the time. I don't know, dude. I was told they couldn't do blood. And if you watch the show, there was no blood on the show. None. And can you imagine if they'd have been able to just go hog wild with the blood? Like, you think Moxley, like, on his own decided, you know, I don't think I want to do any blood in this particular match right here. Remember that period where he had, like, he bled in every single solitary match, including yes. matches he wasn't in? Yes. So I think that there was not there was no blood allowed on the show for whatever reason. And and just to back you up there, they, they were trying so hard not to kill. He they were trying so hard not to kill Danielson, but he still ended up with a huge goose egg over his right well, eye, left yeah, eye. That happens. Gosh. But yes, I'm sure. I mean, the idea here is he's dead. Yeah. That's it. That's the end of Brian Danielson. Someday he will be resurrected, but for now he's dead. That was the end of this. Fans chanting bullshit. They're yeah. furious. Well, then, and then that's before shit went down. So Moxley has won. Marino came out with him, got ejected during the match. She returns along with Claudio and Pac. They stroll out. They got a duffel bag based off the belt in there. That's secondary to what they're here for. What was that all about? To show that the belt is secondary. They, 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 the, winning the championship was a means to an end. Okay. The means to an end was to eliminate Brian Danielson. Which, sure. to be fair, I still don't really understand why that's so important to them. But that's what they're here to do. So they're out there. And they're menacing Danielson. It looks bad. Outruns local hero Darby Allen with a chair. And Brian's only ally in this conflict, Wheeler Yuta. And they clean house. And the, the bad guys run away because Darby's got a weapon. And Wheeler checks on Dar uh, Brian and slowly rises to his feet and slowly turns around. And everyone in this building knows what's about to happen except Darby <laughs> Allen. And they're pissed. Ah, you son of a bitch. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Oh, you fucking did it. And Yuta lays out Darby with Brian Danielson's knee strike. Mm. It's no longer a tribute that he's doing all this shit. He's stolen Danielson's shit. Now, he's still conflicted and heartbroken. Doesn't want to do any of this. For some reason, he has to. The heels get back in. They pass Yuta the plastic bag. He doesn't want to, but he must be the one who puts the plastic bag on Brian Anderson and tries to murder him. Security's hitting the ring. All these badasses, the like Moxley and Pack and Claudio are fighting them all off. Place is going crazy. Darby, I, I guess they taped him to the corner. He was clearly stuck in the corner. Could not yes, get up. They did duct tape both of his hands to the bottom. Okay, rope. I thought they had just laid him out and beat him up. But okay, so he he couldn't help. He's he's forced to watch. Eventually. Finally, the whole locker room empties, and the whatever combat club makes their exit, and Jarrett's out there, and Orange Cassidy's out there. I guess Hook was out there. Couldn't even tell. It's, a, it's the whole babyface locker room. And uh, Dance never recovered. You know, like he got to his feet and waved. He never gave a thumbs up to people. He was stretched out. He was on oxygen. They lowered That's their big thing lately. It's giving people oxygen. Well, in this case, he was being in WWE too. suffocated. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. And he was wheeled back. The crowd's softly booing, but they're all waiting for... They're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Lashley will come out and vow revenge. Shane McMahon Lashley. will say, I'm the one. Something! They thought something mm -hmm. would happen. They didn't think the show would end the way it ended until it actually ended. Actually, right. it was... Everyone slowly starts quietly getting up and leaving. Eventually, it finally. Was, it was very much like The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels when Undertaker retired him. And, like, that's exactly what happened. Is everyone just slowly stood up and quietly, sadly walked out of the building that night. But here, it was poor Justin Roberts who had to say... Please drive safely, everybody. And then they fucking start booing this poor guy. Boo! Justin, fuck you! It's like, it's not that guy's fault. Yeah. But yeah. He, he got he got the uh, he got the brunt of it. Yeah, nothing done. They send so the fans home happy. So the fans are shuffling out. The, the 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 shot that will stick with me is on the floor, Darby Allen and Orange Cassidy are there together, heartbroken and enraged. And there's going to be hell to pay. Well, I don't know if they can stretch this out a year, but, like, the obvious thing here is that, you know, Darby uh, maybe gets a shot at Moxley at some point, you know, January, February, March, gets beaten, uh, goes to climb Everest, God forbid, comes home, and then uh, no, Moxley's still the champion, <laughs> yes. yes. 
and uh, and you end up doing next year at Wrestle Dream in Tacoma. Darby beats Moxie for the AW title to get revenge for Brian Danielson. I can see them doing that because if you think about it, if you think about it, this is kind of what they did with Cody and Roman, where everybody thought that Cody was going to win. Roman beat him, and the idea is we're going to hold it off a whole year, and then everybody questioned it. But if you look at business. They made the right call. They waited a year. Cody beat Roman. Yeah. I mean, it worked. So this is almost the exact same thing. Obviously, I don't think next year's Russell Dream is going to do 80,000 people. But um, I think that that's the story that they could tell here. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.